Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create the veneers that were used on these bracelets. So this is the tutorial that I'm going to be doing and this is going to be part one so you'll have to look out for the other parts but we're going to be doing a bracelet and we're also going to be doing a necklace. So let's get started. I'm going to be using three different textures and I'm going to be using Hill and Braille's Ginkgo Toss Texture. You can see that one. I'm also going to be using my Ancient Roots Texture. And I'll provide a link to that in the links below. And I'm also going to be using one of our Pebble Textures. And I'll provide a link for that in the links below. So you'll need a sheet of white Prima that was rolled out on your thickest setting. And this is about 5 to 4 millimeters thick. And then dust your stamp with a light dust of cornstarch or spray with water, whichever one you want. And then start from one end of the stamp and press your clay in. And this is to avoid air balls. You can use your roller, um, but I find that the polymer clay can lift out quite easily, and so I prefer to press it in lightly and then use a roller. And you can use any texture stamp for this um, tutorial. Um, just be aware that the raised part of the texture is going to be the white part in this veneer. Okay, and I'll just roll that flat. And now with these polymer clay textures, you need to be a little careful when you're lifting them out. So I like to go around and gently peel up the edges, like that, and then gently lift it out. Because it can stick a little bit. There we are. But it leaves a really nice texture. Okay, And then trim away any excess bits. Now we're ready to start creating our veneers. So I'm going to be making all three, but I'm going to show you each one individually because we're going to be doing different colours. So you need to decide for each of your three textures what colours of inks you want to go with. Okay, so I've chosen my bottles for each one. Now I'm using all three of these together, so I want my ink bottle colours to match. Now I'm using quite a few inks, you don't have to use as many, it's all up to you. Now for the ginkgo I'm going to be using bottle, botanical, meadow, and that's what I'm going to be using for this one. For my ancient root I'm going to be using citrus, lettuce, and caramel. And that's that for that one. For my pebble, I'm going to use ginger, teakwood, and espresso. Now, again, you don't have to use that many inks. You can use one colour of ink with this technique and it will work just fine. But using multiple colours can look quite effective. So, we'll start with the ginkgo. And this is the one that I'm going to be using for my bracelet. And then open your bottles away from your clay because the bottles can, um, the ink around the bottle can um, be dried and then it crumbles all over the place and you get it on your clay. And have a brush ready because you don't want lots of ink sitting around like that, you want to move it around before it stains in that one particular area because then you're going to get a massive ink block there and it's going to look all weird 
and just distribute the colours around and now the goal here is to stain your clay so you're going to be using quite a bit of ink and you want to be using dark colours pastel is not going to work you don't want any sort of colours that are like really light and pastel -y. you want nice dark vivid colours so the pinata inks will work very well for this they've got very dark interesting colours but I know that there's a pastel and a metallic line in these inks the um, if I pronounce it right I think it's Adirondack or Adirondack I might be completely wrong but anyway I know that they carry a pastel and metallic line both of those aren't going to work because they're too light okay and I'm just going to pop my colors on and now I don't mind if I've got some of the previous colour on my brush and the two colours get mixed together that's perfectly fine just cover your entire piece of clay with that ink and kind of merge it together with the other one as well you can cross those over as well and I'm going to do this with all of my sheets I'm going to go and um, patch the alcohol ink over the veneers using the colours that I showed before and then you want to let that sit for or maybe five minutes to ten minutes uh, longest you want to leave it is an hour and that will allow the ink to sit on the clay and sink in that is very important it needs to sink into the clay otherwise it's not going to work if it hasn't stained your clay it's not going to work so I'll continue doing this and then when it's been sitting around for about 10 minutes I can show you what to do next okay so I've let them sit for a little while and now we're going to proceed to the next step so I'll bring over the ginkgo one and you're also going to need a wet wipe for this and make sure it's a nice wet one you're also going to need 99% alcohol and now it is important that it has a high percentage over here no lower than 95% Okay, and you just want to give your piece of clay a good spray so that it's literally swimming in the alcohol. Then take your wet wipe and gently press it over the top so that it's going to soak up that alcohol. It's also going to remove quite a bit of the alcohol ink. Again, spray it and again remove it. And now what the alcohol is doing is it is actually drying out the clay each time we remove it now it is going to remove a bit of the alcohol ink and this is why I was saying that you need strong colors because that's unavoidable okay spray again dab again and I can wipe as well to get rid of some of that stuff and this is also why you want the alcohol ink to stay on there so that it is going to stain your clay because you want it's basically removed all of the surface alcohol ink the rest is just stuff that's been stained so the surface layer of your clay is basically just stained and this is how we are going to achieve um, our texture, our surface texture over here looking white. You're going to take your wet wipe and you're just going to gently rub over the top. And over a little while this will start to remove the top layer of your clay. And it helps to spray again. The more you spray the better your crackle will be. So I tend to spray at least um, 7 times to about 10. And in that period of time, I want to remove most of this alcohol that's sitting on top. And now you can either leave it white, which is going to take a while because you're going to need to scrape to rub away quite a bit of the surface here. 
or you can leave it with just a light stain like that but I like the contrast so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to spray scrub and spray until I'm happy with how these surface skin coats look and all the time each time you spray you're going to be deepening your crackles because it's going to be drying out the clay even more and it's going to look really cool you don't even need to have a texture to do this tutorial or this technique you can very easily do it on just plain white clay with alcohol ink you don't even need to use alcohol ink you can just spray the 99% alcohol and wipe away and you will still get a crackle you just need to highlight it somehow and the alcohol inks are a really good way of highlighting it so I'll be doing this technique in later videos and I'll show different ways of using it so that you guys can see all the cool ways you can use it so this is probably the last time that I'm going to spray I just want to make sure that those ginkgo patterns are well revealed Okay, and this is going to um, it's going to rub off your clay so you can he see here if you feel it you can actually take off the clay that has dissolved so this is going to flatten out your pattern a little bit as well so these ginkgoes are almost flat so you need to be careful of that because once you get down too far it means that you're going to be removing the um, non-indented areas and you don't want that so that's basically it I'm happy with how it's dried so what I want to do now is I just want to gently pick this up clean the tile and then blow on this to dry it okay and it should have a matte appearance to it and if you look really closely and I'm not sure if it's going to pick that up but you should see that it's going to start cracking on its own because the surface of this clay is so dry now once you've done that and made sure that you've sprayed it enough I want to spray it just one more time and just dab it because this top layer over here where the ginkgo leaves are, the raised bit um, has not dried out enough so I'm just going to pop a little bit more alcohol on and just dab it this time instead of rubbing because each time you rub you're removing the layer that um, is going to be dried by the alcohol and so the bottom layer is dried but this top layer hasn't so I just need to spray it twice more to make sure that it's properly dried out and this is what I'm going to do for all of the other textures I'm just going to show you what they look like before I spray them and then I'll show you what they look like afterwards now you want to make sure that this is completely dry before you try crackling it so just gently blow on it and it will dry but I'm going to put that to the side for a second and I'll show you the other ones so here's the tree and you can see that it's kind of like mingling moss and bark together and I'm going to do the exact same technique that I showed you on these and here's the pebble one and so I'll repeat what I've done for the ginkgo on those and then we'll, both, we'll crackle all of those. Okay, so I've let them dry and I've finished them all up. So here they all are. This is the ginkgo one. Here's the ancient tree roots one. And here is the pebble one. So we'll start with the ginkgo one. So you can do this by either rolling or gently stretching I favour stretching before rolling but I like to do both and now have patience if you want to expose the white underneath what you can do is you, if you didn't want these cracks to be very big you could always highlight it with alcohol ink you don't necessarily have to expand these cracks to the point where you're going to see them when you flatten them 
If you pour alcohol ink on this, you'll find that it will highlight those cracks quite nicely. So experiment around, it's a very versatile technique. Hopefully you can see those cracks starting to appear. Now the nice thing about spreading this out enough that you're going to be able to see the cracks is that you're basically just going to be seeing white, so the ginkgo over here is going to appear that it's not cracked. But there are cracks appearing on it. So if I show you that there, hopefully you can see there that there are cracks there. Now, I'm just stretching this out as much as I can. I don't want to break it because I can very easily rip this sheet. So just stretch it out to the point where any further and you'll start to break it because we're going to put a backing on this anyway. I'm just busy stretching it out. And this is the fun part, you want to make sure that you get all of those cracks everywhere. Okay, so that's that one. And what we're going to do, is I'm going to flatten this out now, because this texture is still raised at this point. Just bring over a roller of some sort, and gently flatten it out. And now because this clay is just dried, it's not actually cured. It means that you'll be able to flatten out pretty easily. So this is basically flat. I've just got a few areas where the clay is a little bit raised still, but it's basically flat. And it flattens without any problems. See how nice that looks so far. I'm going to put a backing on this so that we can stretch it some more. Okay, and here's a sheet of white that I rolled out. And I'm just going to pop this on top and smooth it out. Don't want air bubbles. If you do get any air bubbles, they're pretty easy to get out later when you just pop it through past the machine. Okay, and just remember to trim away any white that's left because you want to use that in future projects. So you don't want it to just sit attached here. There you go. And now I'm going to run this through my thickest setting on my pasta machine. And you'll see immediately that that has created our crackles. And now I'm just going to go with my roller and flatten it out because I did get a little bit of roller lines. But there we are, that's what we want. Now you can see that these ginkgos are not as clear as the ones over here because I didn't rub off as much of that white because I wanted it to blend in a little bit more but depending on how much you rub off of the surface you're going to get a more clear image so that's our first sheet you can see it looks really beautiful okay so let's move on to the next one and now these ones will have more raised textures. The texture is quite a bit more raised than the ginkgo. So you're going to want to make sure that it's going to crackle first. And you can just do that by bending it slightly. And then if it is going to crackle, go and flatten it out. And even at this point, once you've flattened it out, if you're not happy with those crackles that you're getting, you can spray the alcohol in that 99% alcohol one and crackle it some more if you're not happy with it. So at any point if you're not happy with it, you can always go back and create bigger cracks. And I think 
I might want to do that with this one. So I'll do that with this one. Bring over the pebble one. Flatten that out. And we'll see how those cracks look. And this one's actually going to come out looking kind of like an animal print. It looks really cool. Didn't expect that. And you can see that even if you have very slight crackles around, it looks really cool. This one I think I'm also going to go and redo that alcoholic because the deeper the texture, the more, the harder it is to tell if you've sprayed it enough to get a crackle. So I'm just going to go spray it a few more times and then I'll come back. Okay. So I sprayed them a little bit more so that they're going to crackle a bit better, as you can see. And I've also brought over a sheet of white so that I can pop them on a backing so that I can stretch them out more because they're quite thin at the moment. Okay, now I'm going to run them through the pasta machine as soon as I've stretched them by hand because I want to try and keep the pattern symmetrical. I don't want it stretched. This is actually creating a really cool animal pattern. It's kind of like leather in a way. There we go. I'm just going to stretch it by hand a bit before putting it through the pasta machine on my thickest set. There we go. And that's all I want. I don't want it to be stretched any further. And that looks absolutely gorgeous. I really like how that one turned out. Okay, and we'll do the same with this one. Roll it by hand. And now depending on the colours of the alcohol inks and the texture they use, you're going to get a completely different effect. And you can't... You can't really repeat the same thing twice. So each sheet you make is completely unique. So you can produce kind of the same effect, but you're never going to produce something that looks exactly the same. Because the crackles are going to be different, the alcohol ink stains are going to be different, so it's going to look unique each time. So, those are our three veneers that we're going to be using in our future project, which will be next week's tutorial. And so let me just show you what these look like. I'm really happy with how these all look. There you are, you can see how all of those look and I'm absolutely in love with this one. This one I really like. But we're going to be using all of these next week. I'm going to be creating a bracelet like this and I'm also going to be making a necklace um, with some of my cutters and it's going to look quite tribal so we're going to have lots of fun next week and you'll be able to see that. So I do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, I certainly enjoyed showing you this technique, it's one of my absolute favourites. There are so many different things that you can do with it and I will be showing more tutorials on this technique because it's so versatile. So you'll be able to see those in, that in future videos. And please do remember to tune in next week as I will be releasing the project tutorial and I hope that you guys are looking forward to that. And if you would like to support me, I do have a Patreon account. Um, I post project tutorials on there every single month. There's all sorts of things on there, so that would be really helpful if you guys could support me there. Um, I also have an Etsy shop by the name of Jessima Design. I sell my cutters, texture stamps, tutorials, and all sorts of things on there that you guys can go and check out. And that's where we got these two texture stamps, so you can go and check that out if you want to. I have links in the description below. And as always, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.